Before we get to the sermon section, and, and I just want to share with you just, just a few thoughts today. It might not even be a message, but I just want to share with you a few thoughts today about the impact that women can have in other people's lives. But before I do that, I'm going to kind of follow up on the little video that we saw. I'm going to talk to you about, first of all, the seven things my mother taught me. Seven things mama taught me. Mom taught me religion. When I spilled my grape juice, she instructed, you better pray. <laughs> that stain will come out of that carpet. My mother taught me about logic. From her decisive words, because I said so, that's why. Mom taught me foresight. Make sure you wear clean underwear in case you're in an accident. <laughs> Mama taught me about um, irony. <laughs> Keep laughing, and I'll give you something to cry about. <laughs> <laughs> she taught me about stamina. You'll sit there until that spinach is finished. Taught me about the weather. It looks like a tornado swept through this room. Taught me about the circle of life. I brought you into this world, and I can take you out. <laughs> she taught me about behavior modification. Stop acting like your father. And she taught me about envy. There are millions and millions of less fortunate children in this world who don't have a mother like you do. So there we go. Some things that mama taught us, and we didn't even realize it, did we, back in the day? But as I was looking through many things that we have throughout the Bible, there's a lot of women in the Bible that were mothers. And there's a lot of women in the Bible that were not mothers. So I just want to just share with you some thoughts about how you ladies can have an impact. There's an impact that you can have that nobody else can have. There's something about you that's unique. God has designed you. He's made you the way you are for, for a purpose and for a reason. And he wants you to exercise your trust in him and your, your dependency upon what he can do in your life. So I just want to talk to you about four or five women in the Bible that made an impact because of this something that they were able to do. Now, when I say impact, I don't want that word to mean to you something big or just fantastic or something that's just larger than life. An impact does not mean it has to be large. An impact just has to mean it has to be something that is happening because of you and because of your influence. So today we're honoring mothers and we're honoring the women of God. And looking in the Bible, we can see that there are so many stories of women who are the main subject of of the story. And so we're going to start back in the Old Testament with Esther. What a fabulous story. And there's no, I could do a whole series on this, on this book of the Bible and, uh, and on this lady. But um, we're not going to do that today. And uh, we won't need to be out here before three. So let's just keep moving along. As we look at Esther, let's go back to chapter four and verse 14. I'm going to pick up with that and just read that scripture and we're going to talk just a little bit about Esther. First of all, she was a, a Jewish girl who lived in Persia. Okay, she was there with the rest of the Jewish nation. And she wins a beauty contest. Now, that doesn't mean that you have to win a beauty contest before you are a lady of impact, okay? She happened to win a beauty contest, test, and she became the queen. And there's so much of this story that just goes on. As the story goes on, we see that she saves her nation from destruction because she realized, here's what happened, she realized personally herself that there was something that God was calling her to, and there was a placement that God had for her in her life. So today, she is one of the models of a lady with impact. Look at verse 14. For if you remain silent at this time, relief and destruction, or de excuse me, relief and de deliverance, and for the Jews will arise from another place. But you and your father's family will perish. And who knows? But what you have come to your royal position for such a time as this. 
So as you look at your life, and I know we have ladies here today that, you know, some of you are, are young and some of you are just a little bit older. And some of you are just a little bit older than that. But as we look at where you are in your life, it doesn't really matter regarding the fact of whether or not you can make an impact. First of all, you probably already have made an impact. And let me just say this. Every lady and every mother is not perfect. We understand that. Okay? And just because this Mother's Day, it doesn't mean that all mothers and all ladies are perfect and, and just have done everything right. But we are honoring mothers today. and We're honoring women today. Women of God understand that God has a plan and a purpose for their life. And when we understand that, when you understand that, it really changes everything. Now, I know this also, that Mother's Day is not a great day for everybody. There may be something that happened in your life that when it comes Mother's Day, you don't even maybe want to come to church on Mother's Day. It could be that something drastic happened. Maybe you lost your mother during this time and, and, and this, um, uh, many, many other different reasons as to why Mother's Day is just not really a super, super happy day for you. I understand that completely. But let's look at the positive parts of these people's lives. So we see Esther, she, she realized that God had a purpose and he had a plan for her life. I've talked to ladies before and mothers who just think that maybe their job is just only, I'm not, I'm not minimizing this, but they think their job is only just to stay home and, and raise their kids. And I will, I will say that is a very, very important part of your life and part of your duty and part of your responsibility. But there's other, other ways that we can look at God's plan and God's purpose for our lives. And as we look at the life of, of Esther, there, there's no way that, that she would have probably even imagined what was going to take place with her influence and with the plan and the purpose that God had for her. So don't underestimate. Don't underestimate yourself. Don't just say, well, I'm just a mom or I'm just, no, no. You are a person made in the image of God and you have value and there's an impact that you can make and there's something about you that is different than anybody else. And so, therefore, allow God to allow your life to be a life that gives tremendous influence and opportunity to those others that you come in contact with, okay? Not just your children, but your neighbors and your family members and those that maybe you work with. Um, you are a person, and make sure that you know and understand the plan and the purpose that God has for you. Not just one time, not just maybe in the past, but even right now and for the rest of of your life. Then we have, back in the book of Timothy, 2 Timothy, we have a couple ladies that um, had tremendous impact. And um, we're going to read now 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 5. Paul is writing this letter to Timothy, and he's, he's, thanking, he's thanking God for a lot of things, and he's sharing with Paul about the things he was thankful for. But then in verse 5, he says, oh, by the way, by the way, he's, I'm reminded, he's, I'm reminded of your sincere faith, of, of, of your sincere faith, which first, he said, which first, it lived in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice. And I am persuaded that now in you also. This is a powerful, powerful little scripture because it tells me there were some exciting, good things happening in the life of Timothy. And Paul, I don't know, evidently Paul knew them. Paul knew Lois and, and Eunice. I don't know, maybe he had some conversations with them. And maybe he, maybe he saw how they were mentoring and, and how they were raising Timothy. But he's now encouraging Timothy by saying, oh, by the way, he said, I, I know why your faith is sincere, and I know why it's powerful. He said, because it started, it started in your mother and in your grandmother. And he said, he said, Timothy, you're living out your life, and it's, it's also in you. I see it. God is using your life. But don't forget, it really started with your mother and your grandmother. You might say, well, pastor, that's not my, that's not my, my story. 
You might be here today and, and, and say, I was never raised in a Christian home. I had no Christian influence. It wasn't my mother. It wasn't my grandmother. Let me just challenge you with this. Break that cycle. Break that cycle. And you be the generation. You be the generation where the change will take place. And then those grandkids of yours and great-grandkids of yours will, will, will understand and realize, oh, it started back. As I read through my, my lineage and, and my, I understand it, it started back and you were that one maybe that it started with. So there's an influence that you have. And if you haven't had it, and everybody wasn't raised in a Christian home, everybody wasn't raised where everything was, was perfect by any means. Nobody was. And there could have been some negative things in your life. And you say, well, no, I'm, I'm a first-generation a first Christian. And I'm, you know, I just got saved here a few months ago, and, and I was never from a, a Christian family. You can start today of being that person of influence right now today. So we see that mothers and grandmothers can make special impact, a special impact on their children and grandchildren. I really enjoy when I go out to a restaurant or go into a store and I see, I see um, a grandparent with their grandchildren. And um, normally, I think normally, the grandchildren will be better with grandma than they are with mama. Now, there might be a reason for that, okay? Maybe it's that special extra candy or the extra ice cream or that extra toy that they buy because they go down the, 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 the aisle in the store and, and get kind of, I don't know. But I know this, there's influence there. There's influence there because of you and because of your life. Number three, we have the, the woman with the issue of blood who is not named here. So let's go back to um, Mark's gospel, and um, we're going to read here what is, or is it Luke? Where are we at? Yeah, we're in Mark chapter 5. This is a story that we, who have been around the church for any time at all, we have read this story. We've heard messages on the story, but I just want to take a little bit of time this morning and read these nine or ten verses and talk just a little bit about this woman with the issue of blood. And the scripture really speaks for itself. Um, a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all that she had. Yet instead of getting better, she grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak because she thought, if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. That's a powerful scripture. Immediately, her bleeding stopped, and she felt her body that was freed from her suffering. Verse 30. At once, Jesus realized that power had gone out from him. He turned around to in the crowd, and he asked, Who touched my clothes? You see the people crowding against you, his disciples answered, and yet you can ask who touched me, but Jesus kept looking around. I think that would be a beautiful scene. Here's this whole crowd here, but yet Jesus, he's looking. He's looking around for this lady. Then the woman, knowing that what had happened to her, she came down and she fell, and she trembled with fear and told the whole truth. He said to her, daughter, your faith, it's a powerful word. Your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. So you know what? Here's a woman would have been probably a nobody in her circle. Matter of fact, she was called unclean because she wasn't even supposed to be around other people. But yet she was there. But the reason she was there because in her heart, in her mind, she was positive, absolutely positive, what could take place with her. She had the faith that couldn't be stopped. Ladies, today, may you possess that. 
You might be going through some tough times right now. There could be, be some things you say, Pastor, you have no idea what I'm going through right this very minute. And yet you're saying I need to have a faith that won't be stopped. Yes, I am. Because we understand our faith in God is what makes all the difference. And then she didn't let any obstacle or any excuse keep her from her goal. How many times we stop just a little bit short, just a little bit short of that blessing or that breakthrough or that, or that miracle that God has for us just because we give up just a little bit too soon. This lady had a huge need, but she understood that there was a big God. She understood that Jesus was the one. So my challenge to you today is make sure you're touching Jesus. Stay in touch with Jesus. Stay in touch with him through the good times and through the bad times. Keep that connection with Christ. Keep that connection with your, in your relationship to him, regardless of what is going on in your life, because touching Jesus makes all the difference in the world. Amen. Then the widow with two mites. Here's another little story that we have tucked away here in the book of Luke. And um, let's just read a few verses here. As Jesus looked up, he saw the rich putting their gifts into the temple treasury. He also saw a poor widow put in two very small copper coins. Truly, I tell you, he says, this poor widow has put in more than all the others. All these people gave their gifts out of their wealth, but she gave out of her poverty, put it all um, in all she had to live on. When I read that, and I'm thinking, how much was it? Someone said it was just, just an, an eighth of a coin or whatever. It was just a, such a small, minimal amount. It wouldn't even hardly buy anything, even in that day. And I, I, I looked at that scripture, and I looked at this little story, and, and this is what kind of came to my mind. We major on the people that do the flamboyant things. We want to talk about, oh, did you see so-and-so? Did you see what she did? Did you? Wow, you know. And, 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 and that's great. But how many times the little things, the little things that you mothers and you ladies do, how many times that little thing that nobody else knew about except maybe one person and yet it made all the difference in the world because you were willing to give of yourself unselfishly. See, there's something about a mother's love that is very unselfish. It should be. And I think a true mother's love really, really is. And in the midst of uh, even going through some tough times, there's something about the heart of a mother that wants to give. Someone said this little boy, he was... Um, asked by his teacher how there was, there was seven in his family, and the teacher said, okay, if we cut this pie into six pieces, uh, what part of the pie will you have? And he said, one, one sixth. And the teacher said, no, you, you, you understand. That's not, that's not right. Well, yeah, he said, it is. He said, but there's seven of us. He said, but we only need six pieces because mom will say she doesn't want one. So the little things that you do in life, mothers, you think, oh, it doesn't make any difference. Yes, it does. When you give your energy and when you say, I've done my best. I remember years ago when I was, my brother's associate pastor, Stephen Marshall, here this morning, and I was his associate pastor for 14 months over in London, Ohio. And um, I remember Steve was preaching. Steve, maybe you don't even remember this, but I'm going to help you out this morning. Steve says, you know what? I've heard people say, I've done my best. He says, I've heard parents say, Pastor, I've done my best. I did all I knew how to do. I've done my best. And here's what Steve said in that message. Did you really do your best? He 
He also said this. Maybe it was in the same sermon, Steve. He says, so many times we're hard on everybody else and easy on ourselves." Ooh. My point is, do your best. What's your best? Your best. The best that you can do. The best that you know how to do. There might be a better way. There might be more, but you don't know that. When you do your very best and you give your all, God will bless you for it. This lady, she gave her all. She gave everything she had. So ladies and mothers today, I want you to be encouraged because you are making an impact on people's lives, even in ways that you don't know it. So it's important that we live right. It's important that we do right. It's important that we talk right. It's important that our priorities are where they need to be because somebody is looking. Somebody is looking all the time.